Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, as someone that still gets IT flashbacks and night terrors of what happens when teams can put new software or changes into a live environment without testing it properly, I know the importance of testing. But I must admit, I have been out of the game for a while and I need to educate myself a little bit more on the differences of automated versus manual testing and so many other areas in this space. So today I've invited QA supermarket founder and CEO Paul Belovic onto the podcast to learn more about his story and also the work that he's doing in this industry where they want to give every software and app developer access to testing by a dedicated professional team who provide higher quality, greater efficiency and better results than in-house or automated testing solutions. And in a world where automated testing is becoming a a bit of a buzzword, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that subject. And Paul also has a very rich career in technology with previous roles as product development director at Blue Lithium, which you may remember went on to be acquired by Yahoo, and also GM of Wargaming Research and Development Center in Austin, Texas. And most recently, he's also founded a software development company called Software to Light. So I think we've got lots to talk about today. And I am in a Philly kind of mood. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Philadelphia so we can speak with Paul right now. Mm -hmm. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Uh, thank you, Nell. Uh, I'm really excited to be on the show today. Uh, I was born in Europe, in Belarus. Uh, the software development industry is pretty wide there. Um, I have started my career as a software developer more than 20 years ago as a Java and C++ engineer. Uh, then I moved to team leading and project management to, to a higher management position like a C-level And since 2009, I was working in a video game development industry in board gaming. Uh, There is a project, World of Tanks, uh, which I developed from from the beginning. Uh, It's a multinational company now. And a few years ago, I decided just to start my own business, which is uh, connected to the software development. Uh, Now I'm working on QASupermarket.com project. And you took me by surprise there, because obviously I've done a little bit of research on you before you came on the podcast today, but I had no idea you had something to do with World of Tanks, one of my favorite pastimes of, uh, of winding down at the end of a day. So I had no idea you were part of that. Yeah, we just started it like in, I think, 2009, uh, and uh, we launched in 2010, I mean, uh, like uh, uh, at a big project and started to earn uh, money uh, and it, it is quite successful uh, now i don't know is it popular in great britain but in uh, in europe in it's i would say it's quite popular not in the united states but in europe yes yeah, it really was it, it was very popular over here as well and i'm quite mm-hmm. fascinated because obviously you've gone from that world and for now you with qa supermarket and for people hearing about QA supermarket for the very first time. Can you just tell them what kind of problems that you're solving with businesses through this technology? So as soon as I'm working in software development, uh, I had a lot of discussions with my client, uh, clients, and I understand that the quality control in need and small projects, especially in startups, is on a pretty low level. Uh, and with my experience, I understand that it puts projects in very difficult positions when a user and customers can just delete the application or close the website because they don't want to struggle with the bugs. Uh, and even brilliant ideas in startups can be refused because of that, as um, it can fail because of bad quality of application, uh, like startup can just be closed. Even worse, if you are the first to bring the idea to people, but with inappropriate quality, uh, the next one could do it in the uh, right way and finally get the idea, get, get the, all the, the benefits from the idea. Uh, and I got that there are few reasons to decision makers uh, do not test their applications, like in these projects. 
uh, mostly they are then they don't have time or budget for it. In my experience, uh, it's a problem of management or planning. Uh, uh, or developer, developers think that uh, automated test uh, test testing tools, or they can uh, doing a good job, or they can test it like by themselves. Uh, but developers love their baby app and uh, no uh, no user sh how how user should know, should work with it and click the right button, and they don't know uh, well uh, what the behavior of user could be in compared to test engineers and uh, finally we got that um, in uh, application the average quant quantity of bugs is one per 25 lines of code so you can imagine uh, in how many bugs could be there uh, and uh, yeah like that and these applications are tested by programmers finally mm -hmm. And in the world of testing, there is, of course, automated testing versus manual testing. So mm -hmm. for anyone that's fairly new to this world, what are the main differences between automated and manual testing? So automated testing is a software testing process in which test cases are passed and automatically analyzed using software tools. Uh, and uh, in uh, the manual testing is uh, when the test uh, pass it by uh, engineers. They use both logic and all possible tools, including special equipment. Um, and by selecting automated methods suitable for for the, they can select the is automated methods suitable for the application. Uh, the main advantage of the um, manual testing is quality. A person can detect any bug, even the most unexpected one, uh, while program can only check what is has what. It has been pre prescribed for. So for manual, uh, for automated tests, you need some kind of scripts uh, to develop. There are no, I would say, out of box automated testing tools which can perform a uh, job correctly. And for people that are listening there, I mean, automation is a big buzzword at the moment. So why mm -hmm. should a business use something like QA Supermarket instead of automated testing? What is it that you guys offer different? Uh, so automated testing uh, requires scripts that can be difficult and time consuming to create. And uh, you need developers time to do that. Uh, automated test scripts can be used and still uh, can be used a few times, but they still requires constant adjustment, which again uh, takes uh, a developer's time. Um, uh, they can have their own bugs inside, like all the automated tools, tools which can um, result of false, negative, on, and positives, like uh, from their uh, side. Uh, and uh, automated testing tools can only do what it's told to do. Uh, like what has been prescribed, as I said, by uh, the uh, scripts developed. And the bugs produced by automated tools, uh, tools uh, looks like a big heap, and uh, people need to sort them and understand what they are about. But test engineers, first, people have intuition and the ability to reason uh, enabling them to identify when something is just off. They can perform exploratory testing. Uh, if they see the indicators of issues beyond the original set of parameters, they can do that. Uh, they can interact in natural ways, ways with the application and devices, uh, performing some gestures that are impossible to replicate digitally. And uh, they can describe bugs in professional way. Uh, so it makes it easier to understand, easier to uh, reproduce, and then finally easier to fix because you can uh, developers can find the way uh, how it how it was like the reason for that. And just to bring to life everything that we're talking about here and help people make sense of everything, do you have any use cases or examples that you could possibly share that would just help people understand the kind of value that you can deliver and also how it would work in their world? Uh, yeah, you know, there was uh, many things which inspired me, uh, but two of them, are, I would say, can bring up uh, 
One is uh, on one project, the project leader has asked shareholder to install Samsung phone emulator and test the Android application on her machine, like on uh, Apple MacBook. Uh, it took her a few days just to find and install it. And after that, a lot of hours, she was trying to, uh, to test the application and the result was like really bad. She, she finds some bugs which cannot be replicated on the real devices and uh, didn't find any, any, any really logical bugs. And she's not professional actually. And it, can you imagine how many hours it, uh, she spent on that? And there was another case, um, uh, the client who came to me and asked it to fix his application because in two weeks he needs to present it to end users on, on the conference. Uh, I said it needs to be tested before to know what we need to fix and uh, what we don't need, uh, what we can skip uh, in order to fix in just to, you know, like to keep money. And he said, I did testing by automated tools already and didn't show me any bugs. So I asked him why he came to me. He said, uh, we have bugs in logic, which cannot be found by automated tools from the box. And uh, it doesn't work. Uh, and then he refused the testing and tested the application by himself. All the bugs he found was fixed. And yeah, the application was failed on the, on the presentation. And I think he lost much more than he kept on testing. So I think it would be cheaper just to run some tests on it and uh, fix what testers can find, can find there. And as someone that's working right in the heart of this industry, I'm curious, what trends are you noticing? And is there anything that particularly excites you in this space? Yep. Uh, so one of the trends now is noticing uh, software development industry is remote working. And uh, actually, uh, that was how I developed the uh, QA Supermarket project. I uh, set up the work remotely. And uh, our team spread it over the world, like to Netherlands, Slovakia, Belarus, and here in the United States. And uh, yeah, we are working online. It helped me in um, in, uh, in in time of uh, quarantine. And now I think we're fit greatly into this in, uh, into this uh, like trend. <laughs> Like people can use that, uh, use us, um, uh, can use us remotely and online. Actually, the idea, uh, I just would like to add something. Uh, the idea of QA supermarket was like a, uh, Uber in taxi or like supermarket, you know, Walmart in text, in testing. Uh, so people just can come, choose, uh, online, do not interact, interact with the uh, sales and uh, all other stuff. We just eliminate all the possible. Mm, stoppers and overheads there and uh, we just created some kind of online hustle-free testing service which can help people to test their uh, applications I mean startups and uh, MVPs uh, in in our on our service really quickly and without without any barriers also, on this podcast, something I always try and do is give the guests an opportunity to bust any myths or any misconceptions. So I've got to ask you, are there any myths in the world of testing that you want to lay to rest today, finally? Yeah, definitely, yes, because I um, I mentioned them already. Uh, first is automated tools uh, out of the box can test everything perfectly. That's not right. Uh, you need to spend a lot of a lot of effort to tune it up, to make a good job and uh, to uh, adjust it in the future. So basically it's very uh, expensive at the beginning. So you need to spend money on the automated tool and then uh, to install it and to, to tune it up. But it became cheaper in the future. So if the project is really, really, really big, and uh, so you can use it definitely. But at the beginning, uh, I would suggest to use manual testing. Uh, it's cheaper and faster, surprisingly, than automated. The another myth is, is uh, friends and family testing is good. Uh, 
So it's, it brings, in, compared to automated tools, uh, it brings the, you know, like real user experience. But uh, usually people, not, which are not professional, describe it, but like uh, uh, it crashed there and that's it. But uh, in professional way, I just would like to, you know, like explain it briefly. Uh, um, engineers describe it like, you know, uh, there is steps to reproduce of this bug that was expected to see. This is the best case we can um, apply to this, we should apply to this, and this is what user sees. And it's, uh, we could add some uh, video to the bug description and stuff like that, so it's easier to for programmers to find it. Uh, another myth, what I would like to mention is programmers are good testers. That's not true. Uh, to be a good test engineer, you need to mm, have some kind of special set of mind to be able to find what other people did wrong. So it's, uh, it can sound boring to someone, but it's like people love their job, actually, uh, people like this. And a programmer also knows uh, know what application should do and what user should click in this application. They did that. They do. They are doing that. And in this case, they cannot find a way to create a bug, to, to find a bug, uh, which can be like any user when they uh, get the application first time, uh, they doing unexpected things. Yeah, uh, like that. And another one, like anyone can, can test. What I said before, you should have a, some, to be a good tester, you should have some a special set of, set of mind to work on the, on other applications, like the applications what brought by the people and uh, uh, experience to understand what, where bugs can be hidden. Excellent. And for anyone listening that would like to find out more information about the world of testing, automated versus manual, and the work that you're doing at QA Supermarket, or even just uh, reach out and contact your team or your, yourself or find out more about the trends in the industry, what's the best way of doing that? Yeah, you just can go to qasupermarket.com website and uh, find all the information, like I said there, we we have uh, articles and uh, explanation what's going on there. And yeah, definitely automated versus manual as soon as we are professional in this area. And you can just, uh, if you're really interested in something and uh, contact to me, you can send me an email to uh, paul at creasupermarket.com and I get it. Excellent. Well, I'll add those links to the uh, show notes that will accompany this podcast just so people can find you guys nice and easily. But I've still get night tremors from my IT and IT flashbacks from my time in IT of what happens when you don't test properly and you do make changes and you do put new things in a live environment without properly testing. So I know firsthand the importance of the work that you're doing here. So, but more than anything, just a big thank you for coming on here and busting a few myths as well. So thanks for joining me today, Paul. Thank you, Neil. It was good uh, conversation. I, I really appreciate that you gave me a uh, chance to participate in your podcast podcast i love paul's mission here of proving to people that software testing by a dedicated professional testing team can provide higher quality greater efficiency and better results and paul knows how the software development cycle looks with within those multinational it companies and i just want to thank him for taking the time for sharing his experiences with us all today especially on the area of human software testing on demand. But I'm curious, what are your experiences? Where do you stand on the automated versus manual testing debate? Because I don't think there is a right and wrong answer, and it will all depend on your unique requirements. But i am throw this one out to you, please. Email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com. Tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. And my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. So keep those messages coming in. I'll read them out on here if you would like me to, of course. I'll always seek your permission. But that's it for today's episode. So I will talk with you all again tomorrow. I'll beam another guest 
wisdom, insights and expertise into your earballs. But all that's left for me to say is a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.